All right, Shalom. First, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Racha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. So, <clears throat> here, um, you know, I was watching a video earlier this morning, all right, that a brother had did on the, um, what that brother did um, on the um, the government shutdown, okay, and how, you know, it affects, like, how it affects people in their jobs and so on and so forth. So, I, I went to USA Today, and I was looking at a couple of these articles, all right, and this, this partial, quote-unquote, partial government shutdown, all right, looking at the, the damage and the risks that it could, the damage that it could possibly cause, man, hey, the 2019 is starting off already bad for for this, um, for this, um, this corporation, which is America, okay, the, 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 uh, the stock's already starting off bad, okay, which really is just continuing from last year, okay, but just, I'm gonna read a little bit of this article, all right, it says, um, government shutdown, how it could hurt the economy, it says, um, with the partial government, um, shutdown stretching into 2019, here's what you need to know about the effects, the economists are starting to weigh the potential damage of the ongoing federal government shutdown to an economic already uh slack it to an economy already beset by a trade war with China and market turmoil. All right. So keep in mind that trade war these these investors are are still concerned about that trade war. All right. It says if the standoff centered on President Donald Trump's demand for more funding for a border wall with Mexico is resolved in the next week, the impact on the U.S. economy will be will likely be trivial, economists say. And really, it's the most high who's putting the spirit on these elites, all right, to to to, to um uh, bring this whole backstory to try and uh you know what I mean make it seem as though it's really about a wall and all that. No, all right, they're getting ready to collapse this economy so they can they can um they can push their new world order and make that 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 chip. All right, the RFID microchip, the new currency. All right, put that into place. Okay, but but they, they need to first do away with this to give the people a reason. All right, to take the chip. Okay, so of course they can easily just say, "Yo, Trump, blah blah blah." Here's the story we're going with, and being the puppet he is, of course he's gonna go with it. All right, it says, um, "I don't think a two-week shutdown shows up on the radar uh, the radar screen, especially since government work typically slows down." Anyway, during the um, Christmas and New Year's holidays, says Mark Zandi, chief economist of Moody's uh, Analytics. Now, here's the thing, though. It typically slows down around this time, but what happens when the shutdown continues through January, February, March, okay? And these workers aren't getting paid, okay? And then it, it, and then it goes from partial to a full government shutdown. And you're going to start seeing protests. You're going to start seeing riots because now people aren't getting paid. You're messing with their money. You have people who are working without pay right now. You have you have people who who, are, who can't even uh, uh take loans. All right, especially for like small businesses, they can't take loans. So what happens when this starts affecting uh uh uh, uh bigger bigger companies and bigger businesses? You know, see America is being affected both on the outside geopolitically and on the inside. It says, uh, but if the impasses uh or the impasse drags into late January or beyond. It could take a noticeable noticeable toll by dampening federal workers' productivity, temporarily halting their paychecks, closing national parks, suspending federal funding for loans, and delaying tax refunds among their impacts. Understand that America runs on money. Just like Duncan runs on donuts or whatever it is, uh, America runs on money, man. Okay? Because everything here in America is based on transactions because this is a corporation. Okay? So when money, all right, or the government is 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 not uh, on par, that messes with the economy. And at this point, with how bad the economy is already, this is only making it worse, because these elites are about ready to just do away with this. They want to. They want their new world order. All right. It says the biggest damage could be inflicted on consumer and business business confidence that's already been dented by the recent stock market sell-off. See says it doesn't help <clears throat> at a time markets are on edge, says economist Nancy Vandal Houghton of Oxford, Oxford Economist. 
uh, econ economics. If the shutdown lasts until the end of January, Zandi estimates it will knock 8.7 billion off gross domestic product, shaving first quarter economic growth by about two tenths of a percentage point. Uh, economist Jesse Edgerton of J.P. Morgan Chase predicts it could trim growth by a half by a half a percentage point. That's about how much the 16-day partial government shutdown reduced growth in late 2013. And we hope, all right, we hope it's far, far worse than or it lasts longer than 16 days. And it does much more damage than that, man. Okay, this the, the downfall of America is about time, man. It's inevitable and it's on its way. Okay, 2019, the year of Karagma, man, that's the year they're going to push that chip. And for them to 100% to, to, to instill it, they're trying to do away with this old currency, man. This old system. So it says, J.P. Morgan Chase estimates the economy will grow at a 2.2% annual rate during the first three months of 2019 before figuring any shutdown impact. Here's how the shutdown could hurt the economy. Um, it says here, uh, less economic output. The shutdown is affecting about a quarter of the federal government or about 800,000 workers. About half of them are working without pay. See? Now, what happens when later, later on down the line, let's say somehow, some way, they, they sort something out and then they get the government back. Now they got to find a way to make a law to uh, uh, pay these uh, um, uh, workers for all that time, all right, that they work without pay. Because people don't play with their money, man. It says, but the rest are on furlough and... And uh, and so the hours they would have clocked aren't counted towards the nation's G GDP. Um, says suspended paychecks. All eight hundred thousand workers aren't getting paid. That means they're uh, they'll now how are they now because the bills don't stop. Okay, the bills don't stop coming, man. They still have to pay bills. They still have to put food on the table. How are they gonna do that? Okay, and this is only a partial shutdown. That's why you got eight hundred thousand. But what happens when this starts affecting um, um, not just uh, federal workers, but your refund checks, you know, your tax refunds, your uh, your school, your financial aid, you know, your your uh, uh, your um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, your uh, 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 food stamps, okay, and all these government benefits, people are gonna start rioting, man, because a lot of people live off of that. See, so what happens when you can't rely on the government anymore? That's and that's what they did by first instilling these different things to make the people what dependent, all right, on the government. Okay, to make the people dependent on the government to to uh, um to so that if they if they if they pull the plug, you're at their mercy. That's why the scriptures say, "We want to you that run down to Egypt for help." Okay. Meaning those who who look who look towards Esau, the so-called white man, and and uh, and uh, uh, his technology and his resources as a, as a means of survival, and not look into the Most High, you're gonna be screwed. All right, because you're gonna find out at the worst time that he's not your he's not your friend; he's your enemy, man. It says national park closes uh, closures, um, government services at a standstill. It says here, home buyers seeking federal housing administration loans will have to wait. So will entrepreneurs applying for small business administration loans and American Americans seeking passports. Such delays could at least temporarily slow the gears of the economy because things aren't running how they're supposed to. Um, the money isn't circulating how it's supposed to because people don't have it to do anything, you know. And if this starts affecting businesses, it's going to start affecting uh, uh, stocks because you have. Uh, 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 people from other countries who are trying to invest in, 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 in stuff from these businesses. Okay, it says, if the shutdown persists into January or even into late January or early February, it could delay at least some Am Americans' tax refunds. Van Hosen said um, that could dampen consumer spending more broadly, at least in the short term. Says here more uncertainty. It's like his name's going kind of slow. Okay. See, you know, he's trying to hinder. Let me let me see if I can pull it up to the correct. There it is. 
and says more uncertainty. The shutdown more broadly adds to, to a climate of uncertainty spawned by the market's big drop since late September. The Trump administration's trade war with China, rising Federal Reserve interest rates, and, and the economy's expected slowdown next year. It does seem like consumer and see a lot of these things that they predict to happen next year and the years after that. The Lord is not having that. He's speeding it all. He's speeding it all up, man. It says it does seem like the like consumer and business uh, sentiment is fragile. Edgerton says the conference board said this week that its index of consumer confidence fell sharply in December, with many analysts blaming the market turbulence. Zandi says. Uh, that risk is lessened by prior shutdowns in recent years that have been resolved with relatively modest damage to the economy. Um, but yeah, basically, you know, that's what's going on, man. That's what's going on in this place now. Um, let me click. Let me go to the page of before this. Because there's a whole lot of articles, man, showing you the, the damage, all right, that this... Um, that this government shutdown could really do. Okay. I don't know why this thing is going so slow. Cause all you see, man. Let me see. Um, all you see is a whole lot of articles on things that are not not good, man. It's not looking good for America. <clears throat> all right, no, let me get the precept, man. Alright, this is Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 10. Let's close this out. Cause... Alright, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 10. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate, and a howling from the second, and a great crashing from the hills. Now, when you go into that word fish gate, uh, let's see. Or if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, let me see. Fight gate. Man, this <laughs> seeing is definitely going hard. All right, see, it says gate, um, i.e. marketplace. All right, marketplace right there, man. So, <clears throat> and what do you call the, what do you call this, this thing, the stock market? Okay, so it says, um, it says, uh, that there shall be a noise of a cry from the, fi from the fish gate or the markets, and then howling from the second and a great crashing from the hills. And that's <laughs> man, that's spiritual because the hills, when, when the scriptures talk about hills and mountains, uh, uh, sometimes they can actually be talking about actual hills and mountains, but usually it represents uh, governments, okay? And so guess what? A great crashing from the governments. Here it is. You got the government shutdown going on, all right? And, and this is really a, a prophecy because the economy is going to collapse. And at this point, everybody sees that. You know, if you don't see that, well... <laughs> Man, you 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 you're done. So it says, "How ye inhabitants of Magtesh, for all the merchant people are cut down, all they that bear silver are cut off, which are all those investors, all right, these economists and all of them." It says, "And it shall come to pass in that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lease that say in their heart, Yahweh will not do good, neither will he do evil." And you have people like that, all right, people who are not even. Uh, who, who who take this for a joke, okay? It says, um, Therefore their goods shall become a booty, and their, their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. The great day of Yahweh by Hashem is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly, 
even the voice of the day of Yahweh, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. All right, because you have a lot of people who, you know, whether it's mighty in status or mighty in strength or whatever it may be, all right, they think that, you know, they, they, they're the ish, you know, oh, yeah, they're the man because of blah, 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 trusting in man, trusting in carnality, they're going to cry their billet about bitterly, man. And when you see uh, 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 people who are usually uh, uh, held in high esteem, seen as mighty, seen as strong, you see them crying and breaking down, then that makes all the other people who, who listen to them or follow them or look up to them break down too, okay? It says, uh, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Okay, because it's going to start, it's going to start with chaos inwards, outwards, you know, you're going to have pestilence, uh, diseases, uh, uh, famines, all of that. Because when the food trucks uh, are not able to uh, 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 make it from one, one city to another to bring the food, what's going to happen? When the cities are shut down because of riots and chaos and, and, and all hell is breaking out in, in the streets and they bring the martial law troops to kill people because number one is going to be for population control and number two is going to be to instill order again, all right? And they ma they mandate that chip, the RFID microchip, because they've already put it out there. All that's left is for them to make it mandatory, man. So don't be surprised when you see that, okay? And even in video games and in movies, they show you uh, 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 in societies where they have things like futuristic uh, uh, or biohumans or things like basically the chip or, or the beast system, what happens? You always have them super troops, them super soldiers regulating everything. And you have checkpoints and you have uh, chipping stations, you know, it always. Okay. It says, um, so that's what's coming, man. All right. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a day of wastes and desolation because those nuclear missiles are going to completely waste this place. It says a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers, which is here. Okay. It says, and I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men. See, having no sense of direction, not knowing what to do, where to go. Because Isaiah 33 and 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. All right. The fear of the Lord is this treasure. Roughly paraphrasing, man. It's, guess what, man? That's, that's only for the men of the Lord, for the elect. Everybody else is not going to know what to do. That's why it says they shall walk like blind men. Because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of them all that dwell in the land. And that's why the scriptures say, America, all right, aka the daughter of Babylon, is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear fire, okay, and it's going to be done away with in an hour, one hour is going to be destroyed, man, and we're, 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 we're patiently waiting that day, man, all right, so I'll get the next precept, this is 2nd Ezra, I started, uh, uh, 15th chapter, I'll start at the top, it says, behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, save the Lord, and that's what we're doing now, all right, that's what we do when we go out there, Okay, we speak the words of prophecy, things that are are, are about to happen, all right, which we're, we're, we're seeing the things happening on the earth. We're breaking it down to, through the scriptures and telling you what those things are going to lead to, all right, because these things have all been written. Well, let me, let's me read it and cause them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true. And those that were the things that were written in paper then are now being uh, uh, broken down now. Okay, now we're going into the things that were written then to show you. All right, that those are the things that are going to be happening now because they are faithful and true. And we believe that. All right. We can see that clearly. <clears throat> Fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. All right. We have a lot of people that, that, that speak against us, but we don't care, man. The scriptures say make, <laughs> make our heads against our heart against their, their heads. OK, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. And the scriptures tell you, man, to die by famine, to die by the sword is better than to die by famine, man. All right, starvation, having your stomach or your body eat itself from the inside, man. Yo, it's not a good feeling, man. But, the, man, the Most High is going to bring some hellish judgment out here. All right, 2019, year of Karagma, man. So, hey, that temptation on all avenues is going to be real. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. And the Most High is justified, and we are his witnesses, along with the angels. 
okay? Because we 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 sigh and cry because of the wickedness that are, that is happening here, man. So the judgment for it is only going to be justified. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer in suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves, and which this goes for Esau and these two thirds. <clears throat> all right. <coughs> And by two thirds, I mean the the two thirds, all right, of the nation of Israel, which will be which will the Most High is gonna kill, all right. It says along with the rest of, of of the wicked that deserve their judgment. It says, "Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually." And we constantly do that, whether we're whether we, our spirits are doing it, whether we're doing it physically, whether we're doing it while prophesying, we constantly complain continually, man. Our groaning, our anguish, all of that is is is. Is groaning is I mean it's complaining to the Lord, and therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive them unto me, or and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, which that's that's talking about really America, because this place is spiritual spiritual uh, Egypt. Okay, it says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, and smite Egypt with plagues as before. And will destroy all the land thereof. Alright. And that's what's going to happen man. Like before. The plagues. That when you read in uh, Wisdom of Solomon. The 17th chapter. Alright. Which is in the Apocrypha. Going into the 18th chapter. You see the plagues the Lord hit Egypt with. You read in the book of Exodus. You see the plagues. But it's going to be far worse now. Because it's going to be amplified. Jeremiah uh, uh, 30 and, and 7. Uh, Daniel's the 12th chapter. The first verse. Tells you man. Jacob's trouble. Which is uh, quickly approaching this place. It's going to be like a time like never before. So the place like Egypt, we've seen that before or we've read about it. Okay. But it's going to be amplified now. Okay. It says, and will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. All right. And showing you talking about this Egypt, our which is America, because um, this is the book of Ezra. This is written way after our, 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 our captivity in Egypt. And this and the Lord said what? And this says here the punishment that the Lord shall bring upon it as a prophecy. It says they that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail through the blasting and hail, and with the, with a fearful consolation. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. And one people and a hey, the scriptures say that Esau is the Lord's sword. Okay? And he's gonna use them to to to, to uh, bring heavy destruction upon upon this earth man and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands going into uh race wars class wars <coughs> swords meaning weapons okay whether it's a, a bat or a brick or a pipe or a broken bottle all right or whatever a, a, a heel you know a baseball bat whatever it is man it says for for there shall be sedition among men all right, which we're going to start seeing, man, because and we're already seeing it. It's happening around the world, but people are so dumb and ignorant that because it's not happening in their city, they think it does. it's not happening at all. But watch, man. Let this, this shutdown continue, man, and see how people react. All right, it says, And invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Because when, when you start messing with people's money and they cannot afford, they cannot pay bills, they cannot do any of that, what happens now? They like you know what? I, now I gotta do what I gotta do, because what the the, the their kings and princes, their mayors, their uh, uh uh their presidents, they're not doing anything for them, so they're gonna take the the power in their own hands. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. All right, martial law when they lock down the cities and shut down the, the neighborhoods and and block off bridges and all different means of of transportation. Now you're stuck wherever you're stuck. Guess what? You're gonna be. If you're in a different, if you work in a different city, you're gonna be desiring to go back home, but you're not gonna be able to. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Okay, men will be afraid, man, because it's gonna be, man. If and if the spirit of your howl by Shem Yahushua is not on you, you're gonna be bugged out. You're gonna be scared. You're gonna lose your mind. All right, <laughs> you're gonna be, hey, man, you're gonna be afraid. All right, it says a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor but shall destroy the houses and the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Because when somebody's hungry, understand, when you're hungry, every little thing ticks you off. But when you're hungry, you're not trying to reason. 
all right? You're trying to satisfy your belly, you know? And when all hell's breaking loose and panic and chaos is going on, people are not trying to sit down and talk about, you know, uh, uh, reminisce about how long they've been neighbors and how long they work together. Oh, then They're not trying to hear that, man, all right? It's, 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 it's your neighbor and his family over you and your family, okay? So if he knows you got something he needs, well, hey, y'all ain't neighbors no more, all right? It says, um... Yeah, I believe. Yeah, I believe there. There it is. That 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 was that was the the last part. So I ended on there, man. Because see, you have a lot of people, you know, especially Jakes. They like to go watch these scary movies. Oh, Bird Box. Oh, oh, uh, The Purge. All these different things, and they love it. Oh, I I love getting that spook. I, I love thrillers. Oh, it, it gives me a sensation like never before. Guess what? The Lord gonna give you a sensation like never before. Okay, when you inside that thriller, when you're inside that horror movie. Okay, and it's happening in your real life, and you can't turn the TV off, and you can't put the popcorn to the side and walk out the theater. Okay, then that see the Lord's gonna have a movie then. All right, He's gonna be having a blast then. Okay, because this hell is about it's coming, man, and it's gonna get you, you, you ignorant Israelites out there, man. It's gonna get you the worst because you're not expecting it. All right, First Thessalonians the fifth chapter, the third verse, man, like sudden destruction. All right, but Lord willing, this is edifying to the elect. Hay man just keep an eye on man all right we're we're in Lord willing this be the year but hey we we we're we're watching man we're patiently waiting all right we're on our watchtower man we have our eyes wide open to see what the Lord is gonna do next okay so Lord willing this is at a final to the elect I want to give all praises to you how by Hashem, how shy by Hashem, until next time Shalom.